Uh, the issue uh, being a reported incident by Susan McNeil, a dog owned by Brittany Eccarino. Do we have uh, Milo with us? I don't believe Milo is on the call at the moment. I'm texting her now to let her know, but uh, she did tell me that she would be out of town. She did brief me on the project uh, or on the issue, um, but I'm trying to see if she can join us. Okay. Well, we're waiting for her. Maybe you could just tee it up, Adolfo. Sure, absolutely. Um, in February... Uh, we had received uh, an initial uh, report from the resident in East Randolph that had mentioned that she had been, uh, she didn't necessarily say that she had been bitten by a dog, but did mention that she, she, at some point there have been connections between bite and um, injury. Um, and so uh, the incident occurred um, uh, in East Randolph, the report that had been issued to the town was that uh, a child was walking uh, its dog. It had gone on, up a driveway into private property. Uh, the, child did not, not the, the child did not return with the dog. And so a, a concerned resident had noticed that the, the two had gone into this area, did not return. And so there was some concern. Um, this person, uh, Miss McNeil, went up the driveway to try to potentially assist uh, a child that she thought was you know, hurt or lost or something. Um, the child was then encountered walking back toward the road with the dog, at which point the dog uh, noticed Miss McNeil uh, walking up the driveway, escaped the control of the, the child, ran towards Miss McNeil, and at that point injured uh, Miss McNeil on her knee, uh, I'm not sure if it was a bite. It's been described as, as an injury, but not a bite, but potentially a bite. Not sufficient enough to warrant uh, medical attention. Um, the report was made with the animal control officer of the incident. There was an attempt to reach me. I was away during that time frame and had not been able to communicate with Ms. McNeil. Um, once we communicated with with Miss McNeil and then I also spoke with our animal control officer I learned of the incident I shared with Miss McNeil um, her ability to request a hearing if she felt it was necessary to request a hearing after several uh, potential weeks of, of the incident being considered by Miss McNeil she decided that yes uh, um, uh, a hearing was necessary because of what had happened and uh, that led to us issuing a notice to uh, Brittany, who owns the dog, and had also been in contact with Milo, our animal control officer, uh, that led us to this hearing today. Okay. So let's start with Ms. McNeil. Um, was uh, the town manager's description of the incident accurate or is there anything you'd like to add? Um, yes, a few corrections. Uh, the, the young boy wasn't walking the dog. The dog had gotten loose. I was out in my driveway um, shoveling snow and the boy ran by after the dog with a cable and a collar in his hand and ran up Lee Whitney's driveway. Um, my dog immediately ran to the front door. I went and put the dog in and because my dog is afraid of this dog because it has been attacked by this dog. And so I went back out and for 10 or 15 minutes, I continued with the snow removal, but uh, Jackson didn't come out of the woods and he's seven years old and it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. And I was worried because he's trying to catch a loose dog and didn't want him to get loose. Um, at that point, I had no idea the dog would come after me. So I grabbed a leash and headed across the street to help, if I could, help find the dog or help 
help Jackson. Um, as I was walking up Lee's driveway, Jackson had caught the dog and was coming over the hill. And as soon as the dog spotted me, which was about 75 feet away, he just bolted towards me. Um, he dragged Jackson on his belly for about 10 or 15 feet before Jackson let go and the dog came at me, um, tearing at my pants leg and then moved up my leg to my knee and did bite me. And I think I, and not, I think I did write that in the written formal complaint. Um, and, and so I was kicking the dog and um, don't know what occurred to stop the dog. I'm not sure if it was my kicking, yelling, or Jackson grabbing the cable. Um, I backed up. I threw Jackson a proper leash so he could hold on to it. And it had a slip lead. So we put that around the dog's neck. And I asked him how the dog got loose this time. And he said he slipped his collar. And so I just followed Jackson, turned around and headed home. And I followed him and told him to please tell his mother that, uh, that the dog bit me. Um, and then once he got the dog in the house, he could bring my leash back. When he came back, he came back with a note from Brittany saying she was sorry that the dog had um, slipped, you know, slipped its collar and bit me. And um, she did apologize. But at this point, um, I'm assuming that the select board read my, um, my written complaint. This isn't the first time this dog has attacked um, a person, I believe so. But um, on uh, November 5th, the dog attacked Brenda Dodge's dog in her own yard. And again, when that happened, um, the dog bolted from the road up into Brenda's yard to attack her dog. Uh, the dog was on a leash with Brittany's uh, teenage brother, but he was running and tripped and the dog got away from him and immediately ran to Brenda's dog. And um, on September 14th, my friend and a, a, a neighbor here was walking my dog and that is Peggy Whiteneck and she's on here as well. And I was coming home from somewhere and stopped my car to talk to Peggy, uh, who again was walking my dog out on the end of Tunbridge Road. And this dog, Oakley, um, came barging out of the house ran across Brittany's lawn and out into the road and attacked my dog. I was kicking it and screaming and we were trying to, you know, little Jackson came out of the house and um, a neighbor who I'm, I don't know came running out of his yard and down the hill when he heard the commotion and yelled and his, his yelling, I guess, made the dog stop. Um, but also on a couple occasions, Lee Whitney has reported the dog in his yard. Um, the week before it bit me, he said the dog was in there in his yard with um, a couple people trying to catch the dog. And on two other occasions, the dog has um, run into my yard and they were trying to catch it. Now, the reason I did not report the incident when it attacked my dog on September 14th is I believed accidents happen. The dog barged out of the house by the little boy and ran out and attacked my dog. I do realize that some dogs are dog aggressive and accidents do happen. And I was trying, I, I was trying to be a kind neighbor. Um, what I'm seeing now, once the dog attacked me, um, this dog is clearly, with his family, he might be fine, but this dog is clearly a nuisance, has been seen running at large many times, and um, I just feel like this dog is aggressive and needs to somehow be 
maintained by Brittany and her family in a better fashion. Clearly tying the dog out is not working. And I'm, uh, this is Peggy Whiteneck. I'm one of the people who um, was involved in the incident with um, the dog attacking her dog when I had her dog on a leash in the road. Uh, so the dog came out and uh, us in the road. Um, I have to tell you, I will not walk by that house anymore. I'm scared to death of that dog and I won't walk by the house anymore. I take, when I take uh, Sue's dog for a walk, I put the dog in the car and I drive to the old tractor place whose owner has given me permission to park there. And I walk in the opposite direction from that house. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of working around that I have to do just to take Sue's dog out for a walk, <laughs> you know, because um, this dog is not contained. And I don't trust the, the people that own him to be able to contain him. And I can say, um, this is Sue again, I can say that I no longer walk by the house either. Now I generally put my dog in the car and take him somewhere else, or I walk up Tunbridge Road with my dog because again, um, you know, it just can't be, it, I just feel that they are not responsible um, to own a dog that is aggressive or potentially vicious, which I believe this dog, according to the town ordinance or the dog ordinance, fits both those descriptions. I have to say, when I bring my dog out, midnight out, um, I don't feel safe without bringing out some sort of protection with me, which is a baseball bat. Um, I just, I don't feel safe without it. Um, the dog did bite me. Um, I did have to go to the hospital for the bite. So Brenda, did you report that? Yes, I did. To Milo? Yes, I did. Catcher? Yes, I did. But uh, you know, I was going to ask that same question because um, uh, Susan McNeil references in her statement that Brenda reported it to both the dog officer and the health officer. Um, yes, I did. And, and that was in November. So I, I guess one question I have is why is this coming to us three months later when that was a serious incident in its own right? I don't oh, no, know. I'm not asking that of you. I'm asking it. Right. <laughs> I know. think it's an excellent question. Yeah. I, mean, the, I, I don't know what the dog officer was doing, but, you know, both incidents got reported to the dog officer, both the bite on, on uh, Sue and the bite on Brenda. Now, I, I would have to go through the ordinance. I, I don't have it in front of me at the moment, but I, I believe it specifically indicates that the the aggrieved party has to request a hearing uh, reporting okay. the incident to the animal control officer and the health officer involves them in attempting to resolve the issue outside of the hearing. But in the case of like today with Ms. McNeil, we expressed to her um, what is in the dog ordinance. And if she wanted to hold a hearing, we presented her with the option to do so. And then she then ultimately said, yes, I want a hearing, which is why we're here. Um, Brenda, I'm not sure in your incident, if your instance, I did not request, I did not hear of a request for a hearing. So it could have been that the incident happened, was reported according to our health officer and our animal control officer was resolved by the parties because no hearing was requested. The words weren't said, I want a hearing, just like Ms. McNeil said, I want a hearing and we're I here. thought I had put in something that I wanted a hearing, but nothing had ever became of it. The health, I know one of them was it, I don't know if it's not the health officer, but the other lady. The dog officer? I think the dog officer said that all she could do was give Brittany a warning or a fine or something like that. And she said that was all she could do. And then that is correct. Our, our animal control officer can issue citations 
can issue warnings so, um, and issue fines, but right. she cannot right. she cannot decide to hold a hearing unless a hearing right. is specifically requested. But, but well, then I think we need to do some education there. So Milo is yeah. better at explaining the process to folks so they understand absolutely. what their options yeah. are. But, absolutely. We're not going to be able to go backwards for this. Yeah. May right, I ask but a it question? Was, it, it was Training. recorded and I thought I did send in a report to have a hearing. I, okay. I, I'll look back and see what it says. See right. what I've got for paperwork so, on it. Thanks, Brenda. We're going to have to just move this hearing forward. And Okay. But, Trini, can I ask you a question about um, some clarification? Uh, hang on. Tom had a question first. I, I, I wanted to ask a question, um, actually, of Brittany. Um, uh, if that's appropriate, Trini. Um, I was trying to get the story from one side, and then I was going to give her a chance okay. to respond to it. Okay. Uh, and then we'll... Maybe go back. Well, well, the question I would ask her to address in her response is how is this dog um, contained in the yard? And why are there multiple instances of it wandering around free? And I'm going to ask that question by, by uh, bracketing it by saying in a previous job, I served for almost three years as the director of a humane society. So mm -hmm. these are some issues that I know a little bit of something about. Okay, hang on uh, just a second, Brittany, before you okay. address that. Susan, what was your question? Um, my question was <laughs> about the citations and um, is it my understanding what was just discussed, just discussed with Adolfo and, and the mentioning of citations and stuff? So, Milo has the ability to give a citation, or is that only if a hearing is called? No, she can issue a citation without a hearing. So then I guess my next question would be as to why there, there was no citation for the um, November 5th attack on Brenda's dog because the ordinance states that it a domestic pet an attack on a mess a domestic pet is in violation of the ordinance. So um, unfortunately we don't have Milo with us tonight uh, but that's a decision she makes of when to issue them and when not to issue them and uh, so we're not going to get that. Let's go over and get uh, Brittany's side of what took place. Um, so honestly, I was unaware of a lot of this stuff um, up until two and a half months ago. I was working full time um, at night. So the kids did have the dog a lot. So, you know, they would call a couple of times when he got out. I was unaware of the September 14th attack, like completely unaware and everybody in the house as well. Um, I do know about the incident with Susan, of course. I, you know, sent Jackson with a note just because I had a newborn at home and wasn't able to go over and apologize in person. Um, and I also knew about Brenda um, and that, you know, I dealt with that with um, Miss Scalera. I can't remember her first name as well as Milo and did the things they had asked of me. Um, as far as Oakley, you know, how he's contained. So we haven't really been able to put up a fence or anything just because of the ground being frozen. So that is our next step. Um, he's a bigger dog. So we're trying to figure out the best way to really contain him and different leads. We're realizing that he was able to get out of. Um, so it's, it's been a process for us as well. We have a couple of people that are working with him to help train him because we don't know how to train him. Um, you know, I have a chihuahua at home as well and don't have too many issues with her. Um, so Oakley has been, he's been different. Um, but like I said, we're doing, the things now that we can, I was unaware of a lot of these instances and yeah, I apologize for everything. Um, he's not like, I get that he's vicious to other people and people are afraid of him, but like in our home, he's not that dog. So a lot of it we're unaware of. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess that's all I can really say at this point. Brittany, you mentioned that he's a large say, dog. What type of dog? Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Tom. What type of dog is he, Brittany? So he's a pit bull. He, he's he's a, a pit bull. The only other dog that I've ever had is a chihuahua. So it was just a transition with the dog. So, you know, just having a bigger dog, it's been different. 
Um, you know, and when we first got him, we got him back in February of last year. Um, and then, you know, in the summertime when we could have done all of these things, we had a few big issues happen. So it was kind of a transitional summer for us. So, you know, things were just kind of put on the back burner with putting up a fence and just doing all of those things. Um, and then as it got, you know, colder out, we couldn't do anything. And that's when these other things happened. Um, and like I said, we haven't been able to do anything since the incident with Susan, just because the ground's frozen. So we can't put up a fence, um, and those types of things. But now like I'm the, you know, me and my husband let him out more than the kids, but like, if they have to, the older boy will let him out. Um, but then they stay outside of them. He comes right back in. So we're doing the things that we can right at this point, And we're putting up a fence this upcoming weekend. So Brittany, it sounds like he is not staying in his collar. Or He's gotten out a few times, I think. Or a leash or hook or whatever. How so do you I know, that? like I said, somebody is always outside of him now. I know that with one instance, um, Jackson had left him outside a little bit longer while I was breastfeeding my daughter. Um, so if he, you know, and this is in the winter time, so he got cold and got himself out of his collar. So like I said, in that instance, we're staying outside with him. When he goes to the bathroom, he comes right back in um, until we are able to get the fence in part of our yard. So, I mean, at, at this point in time, that's kind of the only thing we can do. Um, we're, like I said, we're fencing in this upcoming weekend. So we're doing the things that we were recommended to do. Um, we have a couple of people, like I said, training with him every so often to help us figure out the best ways to work with Oakley. Um, so, I mean, any recommendations from you guys as well, different things we can do. Like I said, it's just, we had a huge transitional year, so it was tough having the dog as well. So a lot of things came up and. So I could add one suggestion. So instead of a collar, it's probably time for a harness Amen. Yep. so that he yep. can't slip that. Okay. I just yep. think that's, that's the next appropriate step here as the collar obviously isn't working. Okay. So along with the fence, if you're creating the fence, you know, I think mm -hmm. those are two good moves. Um, so that's where I'll stop right there. Let Tom jump in. If you get the right type of harness, uh, there's what's called a slip harness, which actually makes the dog easier to walk too, because you, you attach to the harness either at the chest or at the back of the neck. And if the dog is pulling, it jerks you know, it tightens the harness and it's a way of controlling him better. Uh, that's, that's what I have for my dog because my dog- I've got two of them. <laughs> pulled me to the ground twice. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's and the only way I can control her. Most, most professional obedience trainers will tell you to work with a slip harness. Um, they come in different brand names, but you know, all the big pet stores carry them. And um, the other, this is gonna be coming from my background in humane work. Um, I'm not surprised to hear it's a pit bull. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, this type of situation is what gives pit bulls a bad name. Um, you know, there are towns in this state that ban pit bulls. And I think from a humane perspective, that's a very unfortunate thing because they're great dogs if they're raised right. And like so. I said, unfortunately, when we got Oakley, um, you know, when I first had gotten him, things were perfect at that point. And then a lot of changes happened. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, it did put the dogs a little on the back burner with doing the things, you know, like fencing in the yard for him. He doesn't get to run. Um, so, you know, there's things, like I said, that we're working on now um, yeah. Yeah. because we're, you know, different situation uh, now. Sure. How um, old is he? Able to do these things. He's a year old. He just oh, turned wow. a year old in okay. December. Well, so he's just, he's still a puppy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would make one other recommendation and that is that the fencing needs to be flush with the back door where he goes out. There should be no gap between that door and the fence, fenced in area because what's happening is he's getting through the door and getting loose as soon as he gets out the door. Yep. And that's what we're doing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So in yeah, we've made that we've made that kind of recommendation before. So I, I know I would stand behind that. Um, the other thing is, until the fence is up and it's a secure transition, it may be better not to have one of the kids be the one taking him out, but somebody that can actually handle him. 
Yep. Like I said, it's, it's been my husband or I, and then, you know, like if I'm breastfeeding by chance and he has to go out, um, the teenage boy in the house will take him out. I see Jackson out with him today. Yep. And he was spoken to because he likes to try help. And we've explained to him, you know, with Oakley getting out and him not being able to handle him. So unfortunately Jackson being seven, he kind of does as he wants. Um, and it's, you know, a discussion we've continuously had. Um, so <laughs> by chance that is going to happen, but that's, we have that's that's that place the adults in the house to take him out. Brittany, are both your dogs licensed? Um, so I did call the town to get them registered. Um, have not received a call back, and I know that it's not open for me to go there. So if you also have any recommendations there to get the proper paperwork and figure out how to get in contact with somebody. Actually, you, you can go to town hall and, and ring to get in and get the license. Um, okay. Yeah. You can also do as I did and just send in the fee and they'll send you a tag. Okay. And with that, you need to submit a rabies uh, vaccination certificate as well. Yep, and we have those. Yeah, yeah. It's important to get that done right away. Yep. I don't know who you're working with, but there are people around the state that specialize in working, one, with pit bulls and two, with dogs that are dog aggressive. That's a whole kind of special uh, school of obedience training. Um, and, and is that, the is that information that, I'm sorry. Susan, hang the on. dog isn't just dog aggressive. The dog went out, I mean, it, it's an aggressive right. dog and any, any person um, knowing or being familiar with dog um, behavior, uh, an aggressive dog will attack from straight on, which is what this dog did to me. Mm -hmm. A fearful dog will circle or come up behind. So this dog is not fearful. And no. I agree with you that I think that this dog needs professional training, not just somebody that is, you know, working with it because it's a friendly dog in their home. But it clearly yeah. is not, yeah. um, it's, it's gonna, I, I just, every time I see someone walk by, I fear for the person walking their child by or something. The dog does not like other people or other pets. So it's a serious situation as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. And I think it needs professional training. Um, it's very different from a Chihuahua, Brittany. Yes. No, said, and I, I've already made that very clear. Yeah. So right now, what uh, what's come out is that um, there needs to be a fence installed that would be, uh, it sounds like tied up to where the dog would enter it between the building and the dot and the fenced in area, that there would be um, some type of training seeked for the dog that would um, along with aggressive dogs training the dog would have a harness instead of just a collar and a slip harness was recommended and that until the dog can be in a secured area that it would only be an adult taking the dog outside did i miss anything and that the dogs will be licensed asap they can put dates on those if the board would like those are the items I picked up. Um, I'd like to see the dogs licensed by the uh, within the week, like by the fifteenth at the latest. It's already past the the you know the deadline for registering each year. So, sounds like that's both dogs. And the fence you said is going up this weekend. Um, this weekend or next weekend, we're going to get everything this weekend. Um, we have all of our kids and we both work this weekend as well. So we are going to get as much of it done as we can. What kind of fences are you planning on putting up, Brittany? Um, so honestly, that's something we're going to look into. Um, like I said, this isn't something I've had to do before. Um, so recommendations there as well. We, you know, this is all kind of new. So if there's a specific type of fencing that I have to have or any recommendations, um, I'm all ears here. I would suggest a probably, I mean, I'm just guessing here and I can actually, you know, look into this more if, if, if um, Milo wanted me to, um, 
I would suggest probably a five to six foot chain link. <laughs> Seriously. I, um, I was, yeah, I was going to say a six foot fence, but I, I wonder if a, a solid wood fence would be better if a dog can't see. That's true. Through the fence, it might be less likely to get agitated. That is true. That's a very good point. And they also have fence. those. Yeah. They also have those uh, green uh, wraparound things for the chain link fences too. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be high enough that the dog can't jump over it. Yeah. Right. Six feet should do it. Yeah. So I guess my next question would be um, to Brittany, are you willing to put the investment into this fence when you're at a rental property? We're trying to buy the house. I mean, that's not a concern. We're adding a porch to the property as well, so. Ah, uh, okay. So to be reasonable to say that probably by, let's give you a couple weekends that, you know, by Monday, the 26th of April, you could have this uh, fence completed? I would think so. Okay, so if we direct my low to uh, follow up on that, you know, you, that can happen a number of ways. You could simply text her some pictures, you know, showing that it's been completed. Um, so, you know, if you feel that's reasonable, then I would strongly suggest that, that we look to have you complete that by the 26th of April. Okay. Um, and another question, too, I can't remember who had mentioned it, but with the specific pit bull training um, and the aggressive dog training, if that's something that I could get emailed to me. I mean, I know that a couple of people in this have my email um, just so I can get proper training for them because that's something we're definitely open to. Um, I was going to look into that. I'm willing to look into that for you, Brittany. Um, okay. When I was working in the humane world, I specifically worked very closely with a national organization of pit bull advocates, actually. Um, and I can reach out to that organization um, and bring this issue to them and, and find out if they have any certified training or specifically with pit bulls in, in you know, our reasonable area. I can also reach out to the Central Vermont Humane Society. I'm sure they might be able to make some suggestions too. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll look into that for you and, and either pass it on directly to you or, or share it with Milo. Okay, thank you. Sure. Just to be clear, we're looking for a six foot fence that will contain the dog, whether she goes chain link or solid picket would be her choice. As long as it contains the dog. We don't care if the dog goes nuts as long as it stays inside the fence, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not, doesn't matter to me what the fence is as long as it does the job. Sure. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think I would like to see that when the dog is is out for uh, for walks that it's on a harness and that it's on um, a leash all the, at all times and that it's only that the, uh, the person at the other end of that leash is, I don't know, big enough to contain that dog, hold on to that leash. Um, don't want any. How old, how old is your teenage son, Brittany? Uh, it's my brother, he's 16. Oh, he's 16, so how about we say that the dog needs to be walked by a, a person 16 years or older to ensure that well, the dog's not going to get loose. The thing is, is when one of the teenagers had the boy, I mean, when one of the teenagers had Oakley one day, that's when he got away from them and he came beelined straight for me and my dog. Yeah, he was on his phone. <laughs> We've had another issue with the smaller dog because he was on his phone. So thankfully, Devin does not walk in with his phone. So that helps. So again, I guess my thing is that even though your teenage brother, who's 16 years old and should be able to handle the dog, um, the dog still, uh, it, they need to handle the dog responsibly. So maybe not running down the road because he tripped. And yes, that's an accident, but that didn't help Brenda or her dog. So I think your, your kids and your brother brothers need to be very aware of the damage that this dog can do to somebody um, 
if the dog gets out of away from their, them, whether they have the dog on a leash or in the yard with it, um, you know, again, it, it's really important. I, I, I can't stress how important it is because the dog has proven to, to be people aggressive and, and dog aggressive. Any, any, um, any really qualified professional trainer will insist on working with each of the people that's going to be walking the dog. So your brother should be prepared and you and your husband to, you know, go through the training together. Any, okay. Anybody that's going to be handling the dog should know what they're doing. And you know. I also, uh, I summarize what we're, what we're looking at for this. We're looking at, um, all dogs in the household licensed by April 15th, a six foot fence from the point of entry or exit of the house into the fenced in area that will contain the dog. What it looks like is up to you. Uh, and having that done by the 26th, um, you'll schedule some training for the dog with um, somebody who deals with aggressive dogs and Tom's going to help you potentially find someone there or that the dog will have a harness, a slip harness has been recommended and be on a leash at all times that it's outside. It'll be walked with a responsible adult at least 16 years of age that can handle the dog. Did I miss anything? I think you got everything, Trini. Yeah. Anybody and have we, anything they want to add to? No, that I think, uh, the, only, the only thing I would like to add is is um, I would I would reiterate um, Susan's um, assertion that this dog is potentially quite dangerous, um, and we really don't want to see this this happen again. We certainly don't want to see um, an attack which is a lot worse than this one. Um, this sounds like a very powerful dog. It could easily cause a great deal of damage to another dog or a human being. And so I think we need to think about what will happen if this incident happens again. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I believe that given the history and the formal complaints that have been issued, that we can order the dog destroyed if this does happen another time. And give, given the potential seriousness of this, I, I think that's something we need to consider. Mm. I don't want to see someone very, very badly hurt by this dog at a later time, knowing that you know, we didn't take this seriously enough. I think the list of, of uh, conditions here, if they're followed, protects the public from this dog and puts the responsibility on Brittany to put these in place and to follow them. Um, I don't believe we have grounds at this point to do much more on this okay. one. Well, just to be clear, Trini, are we mandating the professional training? We are. We are. Okay. So far, that clear. list is all mandates. What's so that? Just, but that's the board's decision. That's just the list of items that I picked out of the whole conversation. Yeah. yeah. No. I think it should be mandated. Uh, to Larry's concern, it's it's. Yeah. You know, but the decision can also say one more incident, and this is what happens. And, and I, Trini, I, I agree with you completely. Um, I believe, according to our ordinance, that if a, another attack were to happen, given the history of this dog, that that the board, at a, at a future hearing, if hopefully we don't need to, but if if there was to happen, that we could order um, mm -hmm. the impoundment or the removal or the destruction of, of the animal. Absolutely and so I just, I just want to make sure that everyone is really clear. I want to make sure Brittany knows that it's really quite serious and that that would be a possibility um, if this were to happen again. I don't want anybody to 
to be surprised or to take this situation any less seriously than I, I think it really warrants. That should be stated in the, um, in the letter or whatever document is going out stipulating our decision that if this happens again, the board will reserve its right to impound the dog or the impoundment and uh, uh, putting down of the dog, whatever term you want to use. Uh, I agree with you, Larry. We need to, we need to give this dog a chance to uh, turn around and we need to give the family a chance potentially to do that, but it's the last chance. I also agree, Larry, that not only would be a possibility, but a probability if it happens again. Okay, I would so say a strong a probability. Of, okay. We have a list of conditions and a statement to add at the end of the discussion <clears throat> about the risk of another incident. Is there anything else we want to add to the conditions? I'd like to ask a question if I could. Will I also, um, will I get um, any paper? Mr. Mr. Um, Ayers mentioned the list of mandates that will go out. So is, will I get a copy of that it's public from this hearing or no? Uh, you wouldn't normally, but it's public record, so anybody can get it. Yeah, anybody can get it. Okay, so I will, um, how will I go about getting the okay. mandates? Okay. I, I, can I we could... just say in the re in, in, in approving this that, that um, we'll direct, uh, who is this letter going to go out from? Is it going to go out from the select board, from the town manager, or from Milo? I'm not quite clear on that. But we could simply say that we would CC Susan McNeil with the letter. I'd like, like that. The decision perfectly goes appropriate. Out as a... Uh, it's a perfectly appropriate request, it seems to me. It's a the good idea. Goes out from the select board in a letter format from the town manager. Right. Well, I would then just like to add to the list of conditions that um, Susan McNeil will be copied. Um, at the address from which she filed the complaint with the um, stipulations. Okay. So before we vote on this, is there any of these that you don't understand, Brittany? Uh, I think I have everything. Um, if I do have questions, I know where to call, but I think everything's pretty self-explanatory and then I'll just wait for the other info for the training. Okay. Anybody I'll want to try and get you that as quickly as I can, Brittany. Thank you. I, I know I, I know who to call. So, <clears throat> so with these uh, conditions in the letter, uh, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make the motion that we we send a letter uh, from the select board to Brittany, copied to Susan, um, with all the stipulations that you have detailed. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. With that, we come to the final, final item of the night with no other agenda to follow. Motion Training. to adjourn. Oops. I just want wanted to say I, I just wanted to say I appreciate the select board taking this on. I know this took up a lot of your time. Um, I appreciate it. And Brittany, I appreciate your um, willingness to do something about this. I just know that this could get really serious really fast. So um, I, I'm I, I'm pleased. Thank you. And okay, now motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Trevor, you don't get to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trevor's been enjoying this. He doesn't want well, to. End welcome, it. Trevor. And, uh, looking yeah, thanks, Trevor, for sitting in on this. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever get to just sit back and watch. So this is kind of a novel experience. <laughs> <laughs>
And, uh, enjoy it while you can. That's right. <laughs> Looking forward to your joining us in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Same, yeah. We'll see you soon. Oh, well, a week. Monday. 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 <laughs> Monday. Yeah. Sounds Trevor, good. Trevor and Great. I will switch roles next meeting. I'll bring the popcorn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're going to hold you. Maybe the, maybe the next one can be in person. Is. I don't yeah, know if there's such uh, yeah. a thing as virtual popcorn, though. But. <laughs> yeah, but I just said, the next one maybe can be in person. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. All right, Good night. everyone. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.